I spent the last three years doing an animation that I'm going to release on March 16th and by the time I'll do it it's probably going to be massively obsolete everything started about two or three years ago I watched this video by CGP Grey where he was talking about uh, this concept that he called yearly themes the idea behind this concept is for you to be able to improve your life in the same way that new year's resolutions are designed to do but without the pressure because usually when you start a new year with new year's resolutions you go super motivated on first of january and then second of january and the third of january and by the first week and second week the motivation starts declining then february arrives and you kind of like don't care anymore and that is because it becomes overwhelming so the idea behind a yearly theme is instead of setting those very specific goals you go like okay this year is going to be the year of fitness so anything that you can think of that motivates you at that exact point in time anything goes as long as you are moving towards the direction of your yearly team that is fine this is an alternative that helps people with adhd or people who struggles with motivation i thought that is a great concept and i adopted it for myself with a little bit of a twist in 2020, I bought the Dead Stranded video game and I loved it. And I decided that I was going to gamify my life. I was going to take the Dead Stranding concept in order to help myself to get motivated into doing projects. So if you haven't played the game, basically you control some Porter Bridges, which is a character that is moving things from point A to point B. And after he delivers a certain number of packages to the same destination, the owner of the destination gives him a star. That is the same concept of uh, when you were in kindergarten and you get start on your forehead, it's <laughs> like, good job. It's kind of like that, but you get this star that you put in your pants and that is like a sort of metal, like, okay, you complete all the missions from this specific paper. So good job. <laughs> so I thought on getting that same concept. So basically what I did was to <laughs> buy some pants from Aliexpress and buy some vinyls and then I started giving myself a star for every personal project that I completed. Initially the idea was to complete all the projects in a year but there were 36 of them and most of them were quite ambitious <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to complete three of them in a month I realized so I can like extend the project deadline to two years and I was keeping a quite nice pace and I started and diving into 3D printing. I started with jewelry, it was super exciting. I had a three um, different projects on queue when something funky started to happen. Um, that probably will need a video on its own because it's up to today I'm not exactly sure what exactly was it. And I don't like to talk about it because it's one of those things that people tend to think you're nuts because it's kind of like uncommon. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that, but in basically, when, basically when this thing happened, I had to relocate. And in this place where I relocated, it was very hard to continue with my projects. I basically didn't have the space to set my 3D printer and I needed for certain professionals to help me with those projects and I couldn't find them on this new city so I had to abruptly stop this project which which is super frustrating you know because it's like uh, if you check this video over here where I talk about this super frustrating journey that I underwent in order to get a 3D printing casting resin specifically for jewelry 
how difficult it was to get, how expensive it was, and those things expire, and they expired so quick, you know, and I was forced to move away, and I couldn't use it. So most of that resin went to waste. Oh my God, I mean, it's freaking unbelievable. Anyway, since I came to this new place and I basically uh, had to rethink my what, what I was going to do in order to keep on going with uh, with the uh, years of the stranding and <laughs> two years of the stranding, I, I thought, okay, what can I possibly do considering that now my resources are limited and I came back to an idea that I had since 2006 2008. Initially it was going to be a graphic novel, a comic book and I actually started with a um, in Spanish we call it escaleta. I'm not exactly sure what the what the word is in is in English. I had already like laid down like the first chapters, but I just scrapped that project because I thought you know what it's going to be so time consuming, and I need to eat. You know, so so it was going to be like you know what if you really want to do this, you need to commit 100% to this project, and it's going to take you at least a year in order to finish it. Just working on this non-stop full time and it was just not not feasible for me at the time. So I basically paused it. And what else could I do? Because I really like this story and I want to tell it, but I, I don't think I have the time for a graphic novel. And I decided that I was going to write a book and that's why I started doing. The moment that I relocated to this new place, I thought, okay, maybe I could do that. But you know, a graphic novel, again, is going to be too, too time consuming. I, I upload, it's going to be two years ago already when I upload this, this video in here, where I talk about the process and uh, more in depth and about that journey. By the time I made this video, the book was already finished. I just needed to start doing the cover and start thinking about the marketing strategy. Unfortunately, two things happened that made me pause the thing. The first one was that I had to relocate again because this new place where I arrived was noisy as hell. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't work, I couldn't sleep, I had severe insomnia. Actually, I, I have sleeping issues since I became a freelancer uh, almost a decade ago. One of the things that people don't tell you about uh, going freelance is that the normal routine that people tend to have gets completely lost. You lose sense of time, you lose sense of day and night, you know, and I developed that. It's like my, my sleeping cycle doesn't go with the 24 hours of the day. It goes like every 26 or so. So as a consequence, I'm sometimes sleeping the whole morning or sleeping the whole afternoon. And <laughs> that can create some problems because uh, people tend to live their life in the day so they make noise, so they wake you up, so the quality of your sleep is not that great. And that was particularly accentuated when I moved to this new place that was super, super low. So I relocated again. Meanwhile, I started thinking about what to do for the marketing strategy. And I thought maybe it, it will be interesting to create a trailer for the book. So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to make a one minute animation that is going to be like a sort of intro for, for this. And I did that. The first thing that I did was to grab a song that I liked, that I thought reflected the overall sentiment that I wanted for the trailer to, to convey. And so basically what I did was to grab that song, import it into Adobe Animate, and start breaking on the timeline the different parts of the song 
and thinking, okay, on this particular part of the song, I want this scene to play. And on this one, I want for this to happen. At the very beginning, it was just a quick video with sentences describing what the scenes were going to be and according to the timing of the song. Then I start blocking the basic animation just with the stick figures and still panels like okay this is going to be the layout this is going to be a full shot this is going to be a medium shot this is going to be a close-up and the scenes kind of like just it very roughly described in this very static way then from there i moved into blocking basic animation also just stick figures and just to pair the basic movement with certain moments in the song after i had that I went to Photoshop and I grabbed the most iconic moment of each scene and start making static screens for the concept part, defining the forms exactly as I wanted them, uh, defining the color palette, uh, defining the lighting, defining just the overall look on each scene, but just like one still or two or three maximum, depending of, of how dynamic the scene was. And once I had that, then I created two different videos. The first one with the stick figures movement and the second one with just the stills. I grabbed those two videos and then went to Fiverr and start searching for musicians that I call commission a song from because uh, I really love the, the song that I used initially but I wanted for my song to be sung by a woman, especially a teenager sounding woman. The main character is a teenager and I kind of wanted for her to be the one singing, so to speak. So, uh, and of course the original song that I based the whole animatic upon is a song that belongs to a, to a proper artist, so probably I will need to get permission for that one and that permission probably wouldn't be cheap to get, I guess. And still I will need to do some modifications to it. So if I don't like, okay, it's probably going to be easier and better to get a musician to get that song specifically for, for this animation. So I went to Fiverr and I started um, scanning the catalog and I found five musicians that I liked. I shortlisted three of them and I commissioned two of them in order to get me songs. They were able to put together the music and the composition, but they wouldn't be able to sing on it. So I also scanned for a singer. I asked the musicians, okay, give me the main melody so I can um, send the melody to the singer so she can sing. I found a singer whose voice I absolutely loved and I, I hired her to sing the lyrics. The problem was that I didn't have any lyrics, so now I needed to find the lyricist. Problem is, I was running out of money at that point, so I thought, okay, I'll try to come up with the lyrics myself. I used ChatGPT. Don't judge me because I didn't put GPT to come up with the lyrics 100%. I mean, I did, but I didn't like what they came up with. So I basically was bouncing ideas back and forth. And I ended up writing them myself because I just didn't like what GPT came up with. I haven't used it for that purpose anymore. So I don't know if it's improved, but at least at the moment I use GPT in order to come up with the lyrics. Uh, it lacked the emotionality that I wanted and needed. Even if I gave it the instruction, it's like, I told him, okay, this is a teenage girl, she is a spirit. I need for her to be like, to reflect that aspiration. And GPT came out like, yeah, this reflects respiration and gave me whatever he wanted. <laughs> it didn't, nah, <laughs> didn't work that way. So I came to GPT just to check uh, spelling and grammar because as you probably can tell, uh, English is not my first language. So I made lyrics for the first version of the song and the second version of the song. I came to my singer, I sent her the main melody that my musicians gave me and well my first musician gave me the main melody for the second melody i came up with it myself 
because I don't know, it was, I, I felt like giving it a go, you know, I just downloaded a, a MIDI <laughs> program and I was like, dee, 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 dee. so basically what I did was take the song that my musician made, just the song without the main melody, and I tried to sing on top of it and record myself singing and then I, I downloaded this MIDI software. I, I, I kind of just got like MIDI software and the first thing that popped, I downloaded that thing and it came with a sort of virtual keyboard and I was just like hearing myself singing and trying to come up with a, with a MIDI, you know, like that you put uh, you have like a, your keyboard in this side and then you have notes and then you have like a sort of timeline and you can stretch how long do you want for that sound to to last well i was just winging it with a thing and something came out from that so i i took that midi crappy thing and i sent it to my singer and she made an amazing job singing it I got my musician to puzzle her voice and the music that he already had. We were kind of like back and forth on how I wanted for it to sound. Certain instruments and certain modulation and the volume of her voice against the voiceover because I also got some voiceover. I used myself and my back then boyfriend for the main dialogue. So then I used Eleven Laughs to kind of like clean, to come up with the new dialogues. First, because I broke up with this guy. <laughs> and second, because my own voice, I'm not, I'm not confident that I got a neutral accent. So yeah, once that was done, I became with the actual animation and that took me over a year. I started rearranging the animation that I already have based on the previous uh, song to this new song and then I started animating and that took over a year I mean it took me I don't know between 10 and 11 months to animate all the scenes it was to the animation I used Adobe Animate just for the blocking and how the things were I'm going to we're going to move then I use Photoshop to clean up the the lines so I started animating basically frame by frame at this point it was incredibly time-consuming and it took me I'm telling you uh, from 10 to 11 months just to finish all the scenes and then once I have them ready and all the animation was ready I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> it, uh, there was something about I, I don't know. I just I was a uh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. And then I, I start thinking, hey, this is you know, okay, you wrote a book, but this looks like an anime. I mean, there is like a sort of disconnect. And if you release a trailer that is animated people are going to expect like, I don't know, like a webtoons or something and you're delivering a book. As it doesn't make much sense. And besides, uh, there were some parts in the animation that, that I didn't like it anymore. The last scene specifically, I used... Well, e each scene was a challenge on their own. I mean, I learned new stuff with each one in my book i have these large structures that rise up to the sky i model this on blender and i had to texture it and i have to learn how, how to camera project uh, stuff in order just to to get the last scene from the animation it is a shot where my main character is being shot from a bow and i have my main character running and then jumping and the running cycle can like work for a certain frame rate but at the moment of combining the 3d render from blender to the 24 frame of my handmade animation there was I don't know, I miscalculated something. I, I think I didn't specify to Blender that it needed to be at 24 frames, so it rendered at 30. And 
I had this mismatch on frame rates, so it, it was not coordinating anymore. So what I did was to basically take the, the, the running cycle and accommodate certain frames. So it did look like it was stepping where it was supposed to be stepping. And uh, as a consequence, the movement was like super clunky. And this was like, I don't, I don't know, probably I could fix it. But the only thing that I thought is like, no, your solution is to animate it this from scratch once again. Or can I just accept that this is going to be a crappy animation and just release it like that and people watch it and, and say, yeah, that, that, that is terribly amateur. And I was in that dilemma when artificial intelligence popped up. So now there was like this new toy in town that everybody hated and where Everybody was fuming. I saw opportunity in there because there were methods to take a video that you already have and put artificial intelligence on top in the same way you will put a TikTok filter. I could migrate the style like my, my realistic illustration. I, I could make a video with that style and it wouldn't take me freaking forever. So I took some extra four months to do that is not that straightforward. There is a lot of manual work that you still need to do, and especially because I work frame by frame, basically. But the AI was a huge help in the sense that if I will have done this manually, I mean, the 2D version that I had animated took me 11 months and it's the most simplistic style that you can think of. If I will try to do that with a realistic illustration that I manage, it will have been possible. I, I mean, what, what do you want? Five years, six years, just working on that alone? So no, I, I, use, I use AI and even AI took four months. At the moment when I started doing that, 11 laps was not a thing. I mean, we now have Sora, and Sora is mind-blowing. And Sora is not yet released to the public, but it's going to be in the nearby future, I guess. And if it's not Sora, uh, Stability is already working on the competition, and that is going to be 100% released for free for everyone to use. And I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm excited for that. I know that you're probably going to hate me for this. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about it. Uh, I see what it can do for me and I think it's better for me to be able to see what it can do for me because that is what everyone will have to end up doing anyway sooner or later. Guys, <laughs> not once in the history of forever human progress has stopped because it did convenience a small group of people. And I know that artists across the globe doesn't seem like a small group of people, but compared with the seven billions of us in the planet, it kind of is. I mean, it has been happening all the time. It happened to the taxi drivers when Uber came into existence. And they took the street and they riot. The taxi drivers have a point when they were complaining because they were saying, you know what, I have to pay for the license. I have to pay taxes. I can't compete with a university student that just enrolled into an app and decides to give rights to people. And yet everybody prefer to ride in Uber because it, they were newer cars, they were cleaner, they were cheaper. That's just the nature of the consumer in every way that you can think possible, you know. It is unfortunate that now our industry is the one that is disrupted this abruptly. When smartphones came into fruition and they integrated cameras to them, Kodak had to reinvent itself. It didn't try to change the law to forbid 
cell phone companies integrating cameras into cell phones because now how they are going to sell their developing film services, you know, it, it, they had to reinvent themselves, they have to adapt. It is our turn. It is a turn and it is the turn of, not only our turn, it's going to be the turn of the vast majority of people, you know, especially if you work with computers, it's going to come for for your job one way or another, that's a fact. And I don't think it's going to be stoppable. And I don't think it's a good use of our time to try to stop it. Right? Here, here it is. And I'm not saying this without a, a dash of frustration because, you know, all the skills that I learned in order to make this animation that I learned four months ago at this point are obsolete already and every time that I learn something something new pops out and you need to relearn the method that you have learned how to do something is not relevant anymore and you need to jump into the next thing and it's, it's, it's so hectic I, I'm just at this point when I was like you know what it's just guys are like <laughs> you go innovate let me know when you are done when the technology is like okay this is the final version that you need to learn <laughs> and then i'll jump in and learn that because at this point everything that i'm learning i need to relearn and relearn and, relearn. and, and i love it you know it's like i'm i'm a i'm an eternal student and and even me as an eternal student can feel overwhelmed sometimes so yeah i kind of like can sympathize with the, uh, the the guys who are frustrated frustrated the, the artists in, in general specifically oops specifically the new students that just got released to the wild the ones that recently graduated from an expensive university because you have a loan to pay probably and you just come out to the world and the field of work just shrank massively. I was like, how are you going to, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I, I wish I can have an answer for you or a solution, but I, the more that I think about it, it's like, well, maybe I'm being unfair with all the anti-AI people because for the longest time I thought that adaptability was a trait inherent to the human condition and that we all have it and maybe i'm wrong maybe not everyone has it maybe i should consider myself blessed because i do have it and maybe it's not as common of a trait as i thought it was i have always had this thing that i call occupational adhd where i'm interested in this thing and then that thing and then that one and then that one and i think being like that is convenient in this day and age of artificial intelligence because it's going to probably is going to render being a specialist obsolete if you have general notions of tiny bits of everything is probably going to be better in this day and age one of the positive things of being like that was that back in the day i got interested in the money field of knowledge. The knowledge that I gained for that was obviously not a warranty for you to make a, a lot of money, but at least it helped me to make right decisions in a way that I don't resent this change that much because I managed to get good investment of my money and that is what is keeping me afloat. And in a sense, is what allowed me to create this project. I'm not creating it thinking that it's going to make money, probably it's going to lose more money than it's going to make. I'm making it because now I got the time, and I got the time because never mind AI and the dire situation that came after COVID, that now there is a lot of unemployed people trying to grab a gig. The situation started getting dire for me specifically like around three years ago because I am Mexican and 
It's actually a good thing for Mexicans in general because our coin became super strong and got 25% stronger in a time span of like four, three years, which is great for Mexicans to travel overseas or to import things, but it's not that great when you're a Mexican and you work for people from overseas, you know, because now you're earning 25% less than you used to three, four years ago. So yeah, basically my options are either to increase my rate as used to be able to make the exact same amount of money that I used to make years ago or earn 25% less. So I'm choosing to raise my rates, but of course I'm raising my rates because I live in Mexico and I have this exchange rate problem, but the rest of the world don't have this problem. So they are able to keep the rates as they are while I have to raise them just in order to make the same money that I used to make before. And that is a problem. But it's a problem that I can't expect the market to regulate for me or for other artists or for me. That's pretty much a me problem. This basically translates in less projects coming my way. So I am using this extra time. Of course, I'm earning less money and I'm using this extra time to work in my personal projects. I'm doing some other things on the side in order to earn money that doesn't have to do with working for clients anymore. It's basically more down to investments and things that have to do, you know, with money, money. That's something that I could recommend you like to to get a financial education. And while these tips certainly are not going to make you rich, they probably are going to help you to have a healthier money status. Back to the animation. I'm going to leave you with the animated version, the one that doesn't have AI yet. And with one of the songs that I hired, it's not going to be the final song. The actual trailer is going to be released on March 16th, because that's the birthday of the person that inspired the book in the first place. I'm going to release a making of video a little bit more detail on the second version soon enough. So yeah, without further ado, this is the previous animated trailer for my book. The good one is going to be released later on. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic night. There are girls going down about Fate's age, never to be seen again. What do you mean? There is nothing south of the pipes but death and the seas. Why would anyone want to go down there? <laughs>